All right, so good. Uh, let's start this next module, which will be understanding how to determine the electrical frequency response of a piezoelectric element using Comsol. So here are the basic things we're going to be doing. We're going to be, be determining the impedance and the phase. The rest you'll be able to figure out. We're going to be using a 2D simulation. We're going to be using a boundary probe to some charges. Uh, we're going to be talking about phasers and absolute values and how to use expressions within COMSOL and apply boundary conditions. So let's begin and I will actually start off with the simulation itself just to make things go a little bit faster. Um, Essentially, you can go into, if you start off Comsol, you can go into the wizard. From the wizard, you can, the model builder, you go to structural, structural, I forget what this, mechanics, I guess. And then you, goes into, you go into piezo. And the, that, that, those are the physics, and the study is um, the frequency response. So we go from the top. The first thing I did was I created this geometry. Change it to millimeters, height of one millimeter. This is the 2D simulation. I chose the material lead zircon and titanate PZT4, so you can just search for that PZT and then you get PZT4. I went to the solid mechanics and what we have to do here is change the thickness. The thickness is the in-plane, uh, the auto-plane thickness of the sample, which is important for the mechanical response. Although you won't get a, uh, uh, a stress distribution in that uh, domain, it will affect the other parameters. You can, and you can look up more about, uh, about this in other finite element uh, resources. But I won't go into that. Uh, I ch I'm choosing damping here. Uh, you have to left click that and you can get you can put in damping here What we want to do for damping we want to put in isotropic Damping which would be at the very end here Isotropic and 0 0.01 uh, that is a Quality factor which you're usually mechanic manufacturer for probably PCT4, it's going to go 400. So the way you get to N, the proper N, which would be the quality factor. So let's just say it's 500. And then 1 over the quality factor equals the mechanical loss factor, tangent phi. Which then equals... 0 0.002 right so the eta would they equal 0 0.001 so essentially 1 over 2 times the quality factor equals this eta and this you can find out in uh, your favorite elasticity theory uh, textbook or fine element textbook which deals with and describes damping. So we'll just set it to 0 0.001. But we want to witness damping a little better because we're using a wide frequency so I'm going to point zero one, which would give it a um, quality factor of 50 which would be more typical of a of a softer PZT like PZT5 but we will Let's continue like this. All right, and it's a piece of electric material, electrostatics. What we need to do, especially there, we need to put this as ground. And we need to put the top as positive. Make sure to put a voltage here as one. Uh, we then need to specify a boundary probe. And you do that by going to definitions, probes, boundary probe. 
and that will get you this screen. Um, we want to select this top boundary. This is the charge. Okay, and look at the units, charge per meter. That's the, thick, that's the depth. If you had a 3D simulation, it would be charge per meter squared because that would be the electrode. But our electrode is in 1D, therefore, and we have to integrate over that electrode. So we essentially have a piezoelectric element which has this type of dimension. We have made it into 2D. So now we're, we're going to integrate over this top area. And the way we do that, the program will integrate for you. As you see here, integration. I think it's another integration. Uh, probe type integral. Uh, okay, so it will integrate for you. Uh, it knows the expression already, Q. And then it'll just do DW. Uh, we basically have to um, usually normally do Q, D, X, D, Y, meaning in two dimensions. It, it will norm it would normally, you know, in two dimensions, typically that's how you do it. But since one of the dimensions is a constant, um, you not only get D, uh, Q as a function of Y dy and you can integrate out that w so that width is already specified we know that so we have to multiply it out 0 0.005 5 millimeters we're just saying it and then you have to multiply that by another factor so now we got q we got that integral and we got q but in order to get current and which then brings us to impedance because impedance equals v i Assuming these are all absolute values or all are all, all these are both RMS sorry division V over I These are all amplitudes So the way we get current is charge You know that charge at any instant in time is equal to the sinusoidal function multiplied uh, multiply with frequency and the amplitude of charge. We take the derivative of that with regards to time, d, dt, charge with regards to time, and derived with regards to time is now current, which then gives us q omega cosine omega t, which then equals i o sine, or oh, sorry, cosine omega t. So basically i o equals QO times um, the angular frequency. So we type in the angular frequency right here. And just to get all the units right, we need to, we should put units here. And okay, and that will just give us amp amp amps and voltage and we're applying one volt so we'll put that in as that so we'll do that and that is a funny thing we just have here oh sorry the, the reason we had a funny thing there is um, well I, I should have put some parentheses And then now we have ohms, which is a unit of um, which is the unit now of this. So basically, it, you, we would just it basically we have, we have integrated across one length. So we'll just leave it as we'll leave it as this, which is the amp uh, uh, the uh, current. Then we'll mesh extremely fine. Frequency domain is 1,000 to 100,000 uh, hertz in steps of 1,000, which is a lot. Let's do 100 since we're only going to do it one time. Um, it's going to create 1,000 different. Seems like too much. I think we'll just do 1,000 here. Replace. 
we will then solve our study here. It won't take too long. And then we're going to I'll skip straight to how I figure how I created the um, how I created the uh, impedance and current uh, responses. So this is a current. And if you see here, we have a negative current and a positive current. We also have an imaginary current. Um, this is just due to the fact that um, we have positive and negative phase, and this is the real part of the current uh, being plotted here. However, we need to plot amplitude. In order to plot amplitude, you need to calculate the absolute, absolute value. So if you go here, uh, and basically I created a 1D plot group, so create 1D plot group you'll get this and then we would then create a point graph and from the point graph what would happen is we would get this value and you need to select a point so select a point with either this one or this one which is on that uh, bound boundary we measured we need to type in an expression so one over the voltage divided by the boundary and that would give you ohms got it and then and that is actually impedance point one graph one is impedance voltage divided by the absolute value and voltage is already in a absolute value we didn't we didn't have any phasing for that um then what we need to do is this um and I'll now explain how to calculate phase. And I've done this before. IR, this is imaginary. This is real. That's Z. This is theta. The imaginary value is double prime, Z double prime. The real value is there so we have to take in order to get theta we need to take the ta inverse tangent so we have tangent minus one of z double prime divided by z prime okay sorry z prime is here opposite over adjacent and then we need to go ahead and we need to multiply that by 180 over pi however I would like to bring your attention to something else if we were to plot C uh, Z is proportional to 1 over the current and basically B and D1 if you remember that value, we actually created B and D1. That was proportional to the current. So basically, for here, we're going to be using um, the current prime divided by double prime. And this will actually give you uh, the correct value. And you have to multiply it, of course, by this. So here I have the real value. Divide by the imaginary one. Multiply 180 over pi. I plot it. It ends up being backward. Meaning that mean between resonance and anti-resonance is negative 90. And otherwise, it's, it's 90 degrees. This is uh, just flipped. Just because the way trigonometry is handled here, uh, you'll have to uh, specify. We could have also done um, I think one over this would might have worked. I don't know anything. Let me see. No, it doesn't it doesn't work. It's something else. But just know that some combination of these two will give you phase and just have a reality check at one point that phase is supposed to be negative. Um, just put that in there and then you're off to no problems.
So there you have it. You have the, uh, and you can also calculate all types of phase like this. Um, you can calculate phase for displacement like this, uh, as long as you are, uh, you know, you can use a boundary probe and displacement, and you'll get a any any type of equation. You can you can use this for phase, um, and also this for amplitude as well. If you have a complex amplitude expression, you have to do some integrals and things like that to get amplitude. So there you have it. You have the phase. Um, and you have the impedance, which is not something that comes standard in ComSol. So you got to be a little bit smart or resourceful in determining these values. So I hope this helped a lot um, to get started uh, with this type of analysis. Uh, feel free to ask questions and email me. My email, my website is learnpiezo.org. And the email you can reach me at is hn.shekhani at gmail. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.